CVC was uh, pretty much a natural extension of, of the Volunteer Action Center, which we started in 1991 and was an immediate success in mobilizing volunteers in the community. But we wanted to do more. We recognized that uh, groups of volunteers brought more, more power than just individual volunteers. Pat had gone to a Points of Light conference and came back with the concept of mobilizing the corporate community. And we decided that was worth trying. And from an initial meeting hosted by United Illuminating, where we gave a uh, background of United Way and what we did in the community, and uh, a brief presentation by a couple of corporations, including UI, which hosted the meeting, and their president, Bob Fiscus, where Bob talked about the uh, value of community service to United Illuminating and what it meant to them as a company and for the quality of life of their employees and also the people they served. We came up with the concept of corporations getting together on a regular basis to talk about what they did in the community to, to see if United Way might help them with their uh, civic uh, responsibility and at the same time help our nonprofits in the Valley do things that they couldn't do alone. We were pleasantly surprised that I believe we had 16 different companies in the room that day. I think we've grown to well over 40, close to 50 now. And if you look at 10 years of uh, accomplishment, it's rather spectacular. In fact, it's rather unbelievable. If you look at all the organizations that we've helped down through the years, it's a true cross-section of the Valley many different types of needs that needed to be addressed uh, that couldn't have been addressed. So uh, for the United Way, the, the Corporate Volunteer Council was a home run from day one. For the community, can't even begin to talk about how much it's done. Uh, it truly is a model, not, not just for the Valley, it's a model for the entire country. The umbrella is the shelter for victims of domestic violence. And when first presented, I thought the project was going to be, you know, bring some paint brushes and uh, we're going to do some painting and we'll do a little landscaping. Well, little did we know that when we arrived at the building, the front porch needed to be replaced. You couldn't get in the building. It was uh, in danger. And got inside, the, the kitchen needed to be, not painted, it needed to be taken apart. What we learned from the, this initial project was that bringing people together who had uh, incredible talent, incredible enthusiasm, would allow us to accomplish things that we never dreamed possible. For the Umbrella, it was a dream come true. Uh, they couldn't possibly have afforded to do that. Uh, we not only were able to mobilize uh, the individual labor that needed for this, but the expertise to make it happen. and running and that was the beginning of 10 years of incredible projects. Spooner House was our second project. Uh, very short, one weekend project. Unlike the other projects which were a full week, the enthusiasm was there, the problem was there, and within one weekend our homeless shelter got its first true renovation in years. Again, proving the value of the corporate volunteer content.
Parent Child Resource Center in Shelton was the third project. And much as the others were uh, renovations, this was a renovation of an old Victorian house that had served multiple uses. Uh, I think the challenge here was not just to uh, paint and clean up, but to give the uh, Parent Child Resource Center a personality. And I think the signature of that particular project was uh, the mural that was painted in the waiting room for kids, which really transformed that building from just being a counseling center into a special place for kids and for the people that served them. And again, a great tribute to the CDC. In 1997, we went back across the Houstonic River to the recreation camp in Derby, with more affectionately known simply as the wreck. I think what we found was the wreck with a W. Uh, the building was really in pretty desperate shape and needed uh, a major renovation, much bigger than we thought when we started. probably had over 300 volunteers who went through during the course of the week and literally transformed a dull cinder block building into a bright, attractive place for kids. And that was about 75 years into the operation of the camp. So it was a, a real landmark for the camp and another landmark for the CVC. In 1997, we did a second project, a smaller project, uh, an outdoors project. We went back to Ansonia and to the Ansonia Nature Center. And our big project there was to uh, build the walkway through the woods to allow people to have a, a great uh, recreational opportunity in the, the wild areas of Ansonia, if you will. And uh, again, probably had 100 volunteers to spend a, a week spreading wood chips and clearing brush, uh, a nice fun project. Nineteen ninety-eight. We also stayed in, in Ansoni. We did a really a remarkable project, uh, the Valley YMCA. And when people think of the Y, they think of recreation. Well, there's another side to the Y, and that they have apartments for single males. And it's one of the few places in the valley that can take on that kind of a challenge. Not only do we paint them and clean them up, but we also had uh, other groups in the community that dedicated new bedding, new linens. Um, really gave it a whole new look and I think the, the word that would best describe this project is at the end is home. We really created a home. The Ansonia Community Action is a neighborhood community center in the north end of Ansonia. Does a great job with kids, particularly with before school and after school programs. The building itself was in need of a, a little brightening, both in, inside and outside. And we're really thrilled that the Corporate Volunteer Council just totally transformed the look and feel of that building. Again, a signature of that event was the mural that was painted on the wall. It really transformed the building. I gotta give credit to our high school students who came in and helped us with the landscaping project. Uh, following the work that was done inside by the CVC. And 
2000, we went to the Head Start facility in Ansonia. Head Start needed a playground area, completely overgrown with brush, and we also went inside the building, did a lot of painting, cleaning, took the gym area and painted the whole facility. It wasn't quite a, as difficult as the first time. We didn't have to replace any porches or rebuild any kitchens, but we did have to do a lot of uh, painting and, and cleaning. And again, it was a, a nice refurbishment, and we've done an awful lot for Umbrella down through the years, but I think the hallmark of that is the renovation of the shelter for the second time. Sorry, I'm loving you, man. I'm good, good, but I'm you. And this was a particularly rewarding project for everyone involved. This is a neighborhood that needed a lot of help, had a lot of great volunteers, but not a lot of resources. And the CVC went in and took uh, both their uh, community areas and their educational areas, did everything from painting to giving them a new computer room with computer resources, basically just uh, completely remodeled the whole building. What the people here at the Tinney Center do is, is an extremely important job. We met them earlier and we felt proud to be part of that, whether that was this week or any other week. The Derby Daycare Project in 2003 was uh, rather unique. So the Derby Daycare Center is in the basement of the United Methodist Church on the Green in Derby. Uh, really a special place for kids. Great environment, but by the time we got there it was a little, a little dark and a little bit dreary on the inside. Uh, for kids, not necessarily the best place. As a historian, I kind of liked it, but you know, it really needed to be brightened up. We spent a week in there and Quite honestly, brought out details of that facility that I think no one had noticed. The beautiful stained glass windows, which were really covered with dirt and grime, uh, just totally gave the place a new look. And it was a real pleasure going back uh, about a month after we we're done and seeing just uh, again. I keep using the word transformation, but that literally is what takes place when the CVC comes in. That place was transformed from a dark and dreary place to a nice, kid-friendly. Uh, environment. In 2004, we uh, descended on the Salvation Army on Leicester Street in the Ansonia, and again, a distressed building, distressed grounds. Hundreds of people went into that building and took a facility that was not attractive, was not being utilized to its, its fullest extent and really gave the Salvation Army a new hope. You know, they've done great work in the community for years, but the building itself had become an obstacle to their work. When we were done, it was again bright, attractive, a place that people would want to go for services, and that's really what the CVC is all about, making these places attractive and usable, and I think the Salvation Army project was another good example of that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other one's right here, they put the new one on here, mm -hmm. uh, put a new one on up here for us, because remember that was open upstairs, look. Yeah. Oh yeah, so they okay, had the great. door. Because, uh, <laughs> in here, with the money, we got, we got the new sinks put on, Okay. new toilets. Remember, this was two, mm -hmm. two toilets back to back in okay. here. But out here, we fixed all the games and everything, <clears throat> so the kids can play the pool table. We had a pool table donated to us. Stand right at that pool table and talk to you. Just okay. so so the kids, usually what we do is we have, we have them either shooting basketball, they shoot pool, they're on the computers, uh, they're doing arts and crafts, so they just, I mean before we couldn't utilize this, because remember the cement floor down here? And so now with the new floor, it's absolutely beautiful.
not much you can say about 2005. It's probably the most unusual, not probably, it is the most unusual project we've ever done and one of the most unusual projects any group has ever done. If you were to tell someone that you were going to build a house, they understand pretty well. But if you tell them you're going to build a house made out of food in order to solve a hunger problem in the community, I don't think they could get the full picture of it. And I don't think you can get the full picture until you've actually seen what was done with the harvest house. Uh, I think we call it a, a labor of love. And it truly was. Hundreds and hundreds of volunteers who helped build it. Uh, hundreds of people who donated the food. But it had a goal, and the goal was to do something about hunger in the valley. Building the house was an incredible, incredible achievement. Tearing it down was just as incredible. In fact, tearing down the house was the reward for building it. The day when the project was taken down right after the United Way kickoff, and the agencies came in and carted away the food, uh, and just see truck after truck after truck going back to homeless shelters and food pantries throughout the valley, knowing that we're doing enough to, to feed hundreds if not thousands of people in the valley over the course of the next few months. Symbolic of all the good work that the CVC has done, hands-on involvement with the community, that returns a benefit that goes far beyond dollars and cents. I looked at the, the piece on all of the different stories for the, um, the weeks of caring and I think about all of the people that have been members of the Corporate Volunteer Council um, for a month or five years or ten years. I think of how fortunate the Valley United Way's Corporate Volunteer Council is to have had these people be a part of this council because they truly were the architects. They truly were the people that were at that very first meeting at UI that said, yes, we definitely want to start a corporate volunteer council. They were the Nick Makes and, and uh, uh, Bob Bartone and Ed Pollux of the world and uh, that really wanted to say, let's do this. And when we talk about networking, that the benefits of the corporate volunteer council, but there's a great, the great benefit is the friendships that have been made. And I think that's people that are still a part of the Corporate Volunteer Council and then people that weave back in. I think that they are the people, the true architects of the Corporate Volunteer Council that I think that will always remember the projects that they worked on.